cute little baby kangaroos are born to bounce. I mean, they don't really box the way you've... No, what they're trying to do is launch those three-inch toenails at you. Well, bounce and kill. This is the Joey pen. Well, hello, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lisa. Lisa, this is Mike. Hi, Hi Mike. Joey's oh. are baby kangaroos, mm -hmm. and this is Nani. Nani. Mm -hmm. Hold this. She's got a bottle with a pen on it somewhere. Uh, yeah. And we're, let's get everybody out first. So we got four all together? Uh, yeah, we pulled four this year, four albino sisters. Hey, albino. Can, now, are albino kangaroos rare? They are very rare. Um, we're actually the only successful breeders in North America of albino eastern gray kangaroos. No kidding. Nani, yep. Nani. What makes you so successful when uh, it comes I to breeding? Know. I, I think we have a lot more room than a lot of people, mm -hmm. and we're oh, just here around the clock, so it's around the clock care. Well, whose mouth am I supposed to shove this in? Right there. Her. Right here? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you did put the poo on the head. Look, look. Oh, there you go. There you go. Is there anything else I should do while this happens? Would, would, it, would it be polite just to push the poo off her head while he's nursing? Or <laughs> you, can, you can lick it off like her mom would. <laughs> That's a real commitment to, to, to motherhood. Oh, yeah. Well, think about it when they're in the pouch and the baby goes to the bathroom. Where does it go? Well, I would imagine there's a little outhouse in there, a little latrine or something. <laughs> the mom would like it if there was, but actually she has to lick it up. And some of the urine is absorbed into the pouch lining. I never really thought of that. The creature lives in the pouch for all those, for how long? Weeks? Months? Oh. Uh, months, d d different amounts of months, depending on the species. These will be in the pouch for six months and then come in and out for another six months. All right. I have one with a um, little case of dirty bottom, dirty bottom. here. When, it, um, when they eat wet grass, like when it rained the other day, they can, it, it can make them have runny bottom. So we've fed them, so now it's time to potty them. You're going to hold one hand here, uh -huh. and this is the cloacia under here. This is where everything important happens from a kangaroo. Right. This is where they mate, that's where they go to the bathroom, that's where the babies come out of, and you just have to stimulate it. We use a wet wipe because very they're used busy, to their... Very busy junction. Yeah. Here, you want to show them with Dilly? Wait, so the goal is to All make right. them pee? Yeah. That way they won't go in their pouch. You train them to, right. to, to go to the bathroom right after they eat, uh, and then lovely. they learn to get out of their pouch to go to the bathroom. This thing's gonna be spoiled forever once you go through a childhood like this. I don't even know. I didn't even know I had to pee. Then a nice lady came along and rubbed me till I did. I'm never leaving this place. You didn't see this on planet Earth. Hey, well, she's biting me. She's grooming you. No, oh, is she? She's accepted you as a kangaroo. Well, she's gonna accept me probably as a fiance in a minute if I do all this right. Well, okay, no. All right, now pull your hand back so we can see if she's seeing or not. Not yet. Okay, go ahead and do it. What do we call this? Yeah, well, you were like, you were like all up in there. That's why you got that. Oh, come on. You gotta be in it to win it there, Sarah. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, and now look you in there with the whole forearm thing flexing and everything. I was trying to gentle it up a little bit. All right, so you can, uh, let's turn around. I think she's got some poo there. Yeah. Um, the little arms are really delicate, so you never want to pick them up from there. Right under here and then the base of the tail and then you flip them and tuck them like a football. Oh, yeah, look at that. Flip them and tuck them like a football. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to flip you and tuck you like a football. Right, like I did this to a goose once. Look yeah. at you, crapped all over yourself. <laughs> now, Tully is our special little girl. Her mom, for some reason, stopped taking care of her, mm -hmm. and so we pulled her, and she had stress fractures in her leg. Oh. So she's got her little camo on. <laughs> so we start standing the same way we did? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. There we go. She Sorry. Sometimes I swear they pee more than they've drank. Still peeing amazing. I feel like I want to pick her up and ring her out. Oh, I don't think we've ever captured a kangaroo <laughs> fart on the show before. Now we have to exercise them. Come on, girls. There's grass. There's grass. Come on, Dillweed. Go, Dilly, go. Lolly, you're not getting your exercise. As these things mature, I mean, they don't really box the way you've... No, no. They're trained to do that on TV. What they're trying to do is grab a hold of you, rock back on that tail, and launch those three-inch toenails at you. Disembowel you, basically. Disembowel you. Make your outsides become, or insides become outsides. This is from a 10-month-old. Yikes. So you imagine what a six-foot... And it's those, it's those toes we're talking about right yeah, there. Yeah, it's these toes right here. This is for grooming, these two toenails. Mm -hmm. Balance, fighting. Killing. So yeah. it's really just the one yeah, major tone. The she's, she's like, what the heck? No. Oh. Yeah, Tucker. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now, um, if you want to see the pouch, inside you can kind of see that waxy material. It's kind of an antibacterial mm -hmm. thing that keeps the baby clean. 
So on, on a full grown kangaroo, the pouch is about like that? Um, the pouch, I'd say, yeah, gets about like that. A water bottle. Yeah. Like yeah. So what are we going to actually do then today with these larger wild um, can kangaroos? The ones that we have that came in that aren't bottle raised are pretty much wild, even though they're captive bred. So they're babies. We have to pull them so that they calm down because they're going to go to zoos all over the world. Right. So if we just send them as adults, then they're not going to have a very happy and healthy life because they're going to be freaking out, running into things. You bottle raise them, and as you can see, they're like, they are fine with any amount of people so they can travel, go to other zoos, they can be in zoos and have screaming kids and staff coming in, and it just makes their, makes their life easier.